listen only mode well it's 10:30 and we are here thank you so much for joining us hello everyone and welcome to today's session we really appreciate your time to join us in our webinar series today i hope the session would be very useful for you to learn about the indian market and also that how are we planning and making the strategy to make everyone successful in the indian market i'd like to introduce today's presenter as abby which is me i'm the vp of international operations online from indore office i've got abhishek is the managing director of the company from the bangalore office and i have michael lakwazi pau from chicago office he is the director of university relations and today's agenda is to talk about the international students recruitment planning and strategy 2017 talk about the indian education fair what are the competitive advantages to join with us in our fair in india why these dates are important the the fair dates what would be the output of the fair a new beginning to a relationship with the indian schools and the colleges looking for partner with an international university for student recruitment so i'm telling you that the one hour is going to be a wonderful session for you to gather so many information to get succeed in the indian market a recorded version of this webinar will be available for you all you need to do is to email us and we will by default would be sending you all of you a recorded session we would we'd like to hear from you so you can see the question chat box and i would welcome all of you to put your inputs so that we can answer that and all can get benefit so i would let michael talk and start his presentation with a wonderful session so thank you so much again michael over to you Hi everybody, um, wherever you are in the world, um, so maybe it's good evening, maybe it's good morning, good afternoon. Uh, just thank you for being here, for joining us. Um, we want to make this um, as useful as possible for your time, so uh, we hope to make this about 30 minutes long for the conversation between me and Abhishek to explain to you about the fair that we're organizing and give you some time for Q&A. So, um, we'll give you some instructions toward the end about uh, chatting your questions into the box and uh, We'll do our best to answer those for everybody in the in the listening mode. So I'm Michael Jakovatsi. Um, uh, I'm going to start by just sort of introducing the uh, company a little bit because there are some people on the phone and on the webinar today that uh, are new to study Metro. And uh, to those who are not, who are already partners of us, welcome back. Uh, I say a little hello to Maury Bond from Saudi Valley University, where I used to work myself. Um, but that being said, I'm going to shut off the cam so you have seen me. Hello, everybody. And that will, I think, improve the uh, bandwidth uh, for the connectivity of the webinar. All right. So first of all, who do we, who we are? Study Metro is, uh, you know, a company based in uh, Bangalore and Indore. Uh, registered office is in Indore. Bangalore office is the biggest office of um, our presence in the whole market. Uh, we've been in business for over five years now, and uh, we have become one of the top five uh, leading Indian uh, consulting recruitment firm for international students studying abroad. Uh, we have done this through many ways. You know, we, we have increased our presence through a large network of agents, but really the focus for us is to build some franchises. Uh, we right now have an office in Indore, Mumbai, Bengaluru, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, uh, Surat, Coimbatore, Hyderabad, and Kolkata. So our goal is to sort of have a presence in most uh, region of India. Um, but in this case, for the tour, we are focusing on the south. Uh, central and the West. Um, and also what's really unique to this tour is that we're focusing on Tier 1 cities and Tier 2 cities. Uh, so the large cities like Mumbai and uh, Bangalore, which, you know, are the biggest in terms of enrollment. Um, but then also, you know, the um, Tier 2 cities, um, Ahmedabad, Indore, markets in which there is still a lot of potential and opportunities to um, engage with students. So we have become certified also with ARC um, as of last year. So we also put a lot of emphasis in the, our ethics and our processes to be strong and transparent. And according to uh, international standards, um, as you know, the agents network in India can sometimes be overwhelming um, and it's very diluted. So we are trying to uh, differentiate ourselves from that by abiding by the uh, international standards, uh, which means that also um, 
as an organization, we have a commitment to customer service and uh, prompt response and quality. Uh, we, we do cater, of course, to uh, students um, from any uh, age and any grades who are aspiring to study abroad. Uh, this is just a quick photo of our office in, uh, uh, in Bangalore. Um, as you see, um, <laughs> our team is working hard every day. Um, and uh, we have sort of a similar uh, concept and culture in every city that I've mentioned before. Uh, in terms of what we, what do we do with, with the school partners, right now you know we have over 250 uni universities who work with us uh, from all over the world. The main markets uh, have been in the past the U.S., um, but we have uh, seen a lot of growth in Europe, in Australia, and Canada. As a matter of fact, uh, for this fair, the goal is going to be to give options for the students to study abroad in wherever they wish to go. Uh, so we are inviting universities from all over the world to join us. And I do believe that one of you today is joining us from South Africa, so welcome from that too. But we, we, we definitely have uh, a full program of services that serves any needs from the early stage of engagement to the later stage of engagement from a student who comes to us. So whether it's about getting training for English courses, preparation for testing, learning how to go and shortlist universities, programs, and then going through the application process, Study Metro has that expertise and has actually sent over um, 2,500 students in the past um, six years. So uh, again, you know, we, we are the expert in that. And this time around, we are inviting you to uh, come visit us uh, in India in the spring and uh, we are putting together a unique multi-city fair that will cover five cities. Uh, the main goal for that of course is to encourage our students to meet directly with the university officials uh, to also help you as a preferred partner to get some branding and marketing in those markets by pushing your brand out during the fair and having that face-to-face -face conversations with the students to build a personal connection with them. Something that is very important in the Indian market is to have a key relationship with the students. And of course, you know, the goal for us is going to present programs for English, a program for undergraduate studies, graduate studies, and doctorate as well. Just again, you know, we, we, we keep saying that India is an important market. A lot of companies and universities have come to us in the past month since we started promoting this, this, um, this fair and saying, well, we want to diversify our international students. We have lost some people from Saudi Arabia. We have lost the Chinese market a little bit. We really need to diversify and we want to bring in some more Indian students. Well, the good news is that India is the second largest market for recruitment um, of international students after China, but it is also the fastest growing market. So it is definitely a place to invest a lot of potential and uh, a lot of interest to study abroad. Um, families uh, are earning more income, savings for their families to, to study abroad and have a better life. And so it has become part of the culture of Indians to, to, to provide that opportunity for their kids to study abroad. Uh, one thing that's also interesting is the shift that we see more and more for the youth. Uh, so more students are also thinking about going uh, right after high school uh, for undergraduate studies or sometimes even during the last school of high school as a way to get into the American or you know, Canadian systems more easily with the testings. So a lot of things are happening now. It's an exciting time. And as you can see here, you know, Mumbai and Bangalore, two of our cities in the fair, uh, end up being in the top five cities for F1 visa holders. I want to give you a quick video, um, very short, that will give you an overview of the fair. And then I'm going to provide you some more details about specific days and the tour. So bear with me. Study Metro invites you to participate in an exclusive opportunity to meet students from five major cities in India, where Study Metro has built a strong reputation as a leading education agency. Join us on a nine-day tour-packed program to increase your enrollment. Participate in education fairs in every city. Give school presentations, visit colleges and high schools to develop your branding. And set up one-on-one -on -one interviews with pre-qualified students. India remains the second most important international student market, one of the largest student populations in the world. 29 million enrolled students in 777 universities and 35,539 colleges. Each year, 2.5 million students graduate. 600,000 Indian students study abroad. Engineering, business and science. 
choose to visit select or all cities of our tour. Study Metro coordinates it all from hotels, transportation, school visits, education expo in Bangalore, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Padudra, and Indore. Timetable. Edufair event Bangalore, April 2nd. Bangalore optional school visit, April 3rd. Edufair event Mumbai, April 4th. Mumbai optional school visit, April 5th. Edifair event Ahmedabad, April 6th. Sightseeing tour, April 7th. Edifair event Vadodara, April 8th. Edifair event Indore, April 9th. Indore optional school visit, April 10th. Study Metro is an AIRC certified company with offices in Bangalore, Indore, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Gondor, Ahmedabad, Surat, and Anand. Study Metro helps 1,000 plus students per year. And member of NAFSA, ICEF, EAIE, AIEA, and QISAF. For more information, contact our U.S. representative at michael at studymetro.com or call us at plus one three one two two one eight 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 three. There we go. So um, hopefully this was a good in, good introduction to the fair, uh, covering again you know the markets in which we're going to be engaging with. Um, I'm really happy that you know we we started launching the fair in January this year, and already we have confirmed the following schools. Uh, Sixteen schools already you know signed up um, from different programs. As you can see, we have uh, colleges from Canada, universities focusing on graduate school. Each of those schools, you know, really bring, I think, a different perspective, different programs, uh, and a unique, maybe, proposition for the students at different low cost and different pricing and scholarships. And that's what we're looking for, is to really diversify the options for the students so we can invite and find a solution for everybody. And that being said, you know, we, we would like to reach um, 25 universities. Uh, we are looking to, to keep this number uh, up to that uh, because we really want this to be a very focused fair for you to really have a chance to meet with every student passing by and to really have time to also engage in a more meaningful way. So uh, we don't want this to be a NAFSA conference. For those who have been there before, you know, it's quite overwhelming for everybody involved. Uh, this is a very targeted partnership schools um, program uh, that will really, I think, draw attention to uh, students. Um, from those regions in those five cities. Um, so again, you know, what is the target audience uh, that will be attending the fair? Uh, we're going to be reaching out to the high schools uh, in the area, keeping in mind that March is a very key time in India because it is the time when uh, high schoolers are um, entering their exam time to finish the secondary school. So um, as they receive their results, April is a really good time to engage them and to identify with them the pathways for their future educations for undergraduate studies. Uh, also April is a good time because it is right before most colleges in India will have their exams. So if you think about reaching out to engineering colleges, business schools, uh, who are finishing a third, fourth year of a bachelor's degree, um, right after you would meet with them, they'll have a chance to finish their exam. So you can motivate them to get good grades, first of all, but also I think it's a key time for them to think about the future of their pathway. And uh, if you're focusing on the fall 2017 intake, this is a very good time. Uh, in India, there is a sense of urgency for everything, so students who are going to you and going to see you at the fair will want to know how soon they're able to start going to your school. For, you, for those of you who have a very good process, uh, maybe it's going to be the summer, uh, maybe it's going to be you know, for the fall, maybe for the spring, but uh, keeping in mind that uh, having that personal face-to-face -face time with the students is going to really help them to see the next steps they have to take to go to your school. Uh, we also have been historically very strong in reaching out to working professionals. Um, so in the past, you know, we have worked with many IT companies to send uh, graduate students to, to, to enhance their education. Uh, with an MSIT or maybe an executive MBA. So our network also includes working professionals and they will be invited to, to, to the fair to explore opportunities for them to go to maybe postdoctorate education and maybe uh, eventually as well um, certificates um, uh, for, their, for their studies. Uh, each, each fair is going to have a different number of students based on the size, um, but uh, we do expect a minimum of 700 students per fair. And so the fair will be, you know, a combination of different programs, including, of course, the, the, the booth, which will give you for 
for exposing your, your university materials and banners and such. But also we'll be including that day uh, some presentations, some workshops, some visa training. So the goal for us is to really make this as relevant as possible for the parents and the students to learn how to accomplish studying abroad. And you being part of the equation to give them some, some, some pathway and some ideas of where to study. So uh, what, what is it, you know, in it for you? I, I think you always need to think about your ROI as a school. You know, we, we definitely want you to think about participating if you're looking to uh, recruit students uh, at, at undergrad level, grad level, of course, too. Uh, more and more, too, we are inviting schools to present summer exchange opportunities or maybe even semester-long opportunities. Uh, we have worked in the past with CSU. Um, and uh, have successfully sent some students for business programs just for one semester. And that is something that is more and more attractive again for those students who are not finished with their bachelor's degree, but are looking to maybe explore the international education right before committing to a full two-year master's degree, for example. So keep in mind, if you have some great summer programs, this would be a key time to also engage with them too. And oftentimes the admissions requirements are a bit more flexible for those, so it's, it's not as, as difficult to, to accept and admit students for that. Uh, we'll be inviting you know, uh, also um, universities and colleges from India to participate there. So also be expecting that in the evening, you'll have a chance to interact with Indian school principals in schools. Um, each night there will be actually a dinner uh, that will be uh, arranged for, for participants to meet uh, with head of schools for you to network, learn more about what they are looking to do with international partnerships and develop relationships with them for recruitment as well. So this is of course, you know, we are an agency so the goal for us is to work together and in the middle of this, this agreement to work in a partnership, we, we are looking forward to also working the leads after you go back to your respective countries. So we, we take on our responsibility after you've left the fair to follow up with every single student about their career, their aspiration for education, and to ensure that they are following up on their commitment to app applying with your schools. So for those who are new to study Metro, the process of um, going into the fair might also include a partnership agreement with us, and we'd be happy to entertain that with you as well, um, separately from today's seminar. Um, again, you know, the, the direct impact is not just recruitment, but it's also the visibility and the branding of your school. Um, as you know, it's a very competitive market, India. Um, in the past five, six, seven years, India has become a focused market. And so every school is now paying attention to what's happening in India and wanting to, to go there, which means that students now also have more options than before. And it's very important for you to have sort of that branding and that personal relationship with the students to make an impact and to retain their engagement. That's why it's so important to be at that fair that day. Um, and of course, it's an opportunity for you to also, I think, uh, speak to the parents, um, give them confidence that your school is the best one and best option for them. Um, give them your contact information if needed as well to have a relationship built and this might be a chance for you to also have some special incentives for applications like scholarship, fee waivers, discounts, you know, whatever you can come up with to be very creative and attractive to the students. Um, so as mentioned before, you know, a second part of the fair is also helping you to get in front of students in the schools of India. So we are arranging two things. Uh, one again is in the evening, you know, we have a night summit, which means, you know, we're going to be arranging a formal dinner with uh, uh, important folks uh, from the government, from the schools, to meet with you directly uh, during dinner time and networking. Uh, and the purpose for that, of course, is to look into engaging in international partnerships. So that's something that also is um, increasingly becoming important for Indian universities for the accreditation. And only a couple of years ago, the government has allowed it to happen. So now they are strongly looking for international pathway programs um, for, for them to have connections with universities abroad to send students to MBAs and such. And so that will give you a chance to explore that um, with them directly. The next day um, in Bangalore, Mumbai, and Indoor, we are exclusively spending time with you, optionally, to arrange some uh, campus presentations, either in private high schools, if you're looking for undergraduate studies, or uh, in colleges, if you're looking to recruit for maybe graduate studies. 
Uh, so in that case, uh, each morning there is time for two to three visits, depending on the location and the traffic, of course, in India. Um, but we can arrange that for you too, so you'd be able to meet at the school directly, uh, meet with the officials, but also have a presentation in front of 100 kids uh, who will get your full attention about your programs and your universities. So again, uh, just to summarize a little bit the fair details, uh, the first fair takes place on April 2nd. The last optional school visit is April 10th. So most people will be coming on April 1st and leaving on April 11th. Our travel package includes that, including April 1st to April 11th, all of your hotel stays. Uh, during that time frame, you'll be able to go into five cities. Again, it's starting in Bangalore, then Mumbai, then um, also um, Ahmedabad, Badudra, and Indore. Uh, and again, in each of these cities, we do have an office also. So that will give you a chance to also meet with our staff. And uh, if time allows, you know, that will give you a chance to also present to us and to train us also on your program so we can follow up quite effectively afterwards. Um, as said before, we have three options for also school visits. Dinners is included in the evening. Lunch is included, of course, too, during the day. Uh, we'll be, of course, arranging all of your hotels if you opt for the travel package. And then during the fairs, you also have an option to do a formal presentation to a focused audience. Um, so again, all of that's going to happen during the tour. Prior to that, um, anybody who is confirmed will receive, of course, the marketing benefit of the fair. So our job for, for us is to market your school, your brand, your programs, your logos ahead of time so we can attract relevant students to the fair to meet with you. So think of it as an investment of not just the recruitment part of it directly, but also how, how are you spending money, um, how are you spending dollars to, to create brand awareness about your school in the region. So this could be a typical agenda example just to, to give you a snapshot. You know, on April 1st, that's the first day in Bangalore, arrival, check-in into the, 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 the Taj Hotel. Uh, in the evening, you know, we'll just kind of register you, get you set up, and we'll have a welcoming dinner. Um, and then that's optional, but we really want for everyone to be there that day in advance. Um, you'll be able to also ship your materials that day to the hotels, have it ready to go. And then on April 2nd is the big day, right? Bangalore is a very big city, so it's a big fair. Um, morning will be registration, set up, uh, we'll have some remarks to kick off everything. And then during the day, of course, there'll be different programs, including the fair booth, the, the exhibition show, uh, the one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, presentations for career fairs, visa training, presentations from your schools, and everything wraps up in the evening with a networking dinner and a formal dinner with the school officials. The next day is an option. Um, you can either relax and follow up on your leads, maybe you have some other business to do in the region, or you can also work with us and we can set you up for school presentations uh, in the morning, and then we transfer you to the next city that evening usually. So that's what it is. The pricing is set here right now. Um, we actually um, are giving an offer that if you are participating in the whole tour, it's going to be the price of 3000 for the fares and $2,000 for the full packet for travel accommodations, which covers your hotel, your flights, domestically, and all of your meals and local transportations. Uh, if you cannot attend the whole fair, then you have an a la carte menu as well, which you see in front of you, and that gives you an option to choose exactly where you want to be involved. Maybe you want to be in Mumbai and Bangalore only, uh, the two biggest cities here, and then you maybe have to do some other business somewhere else. So again, we're very flexible with you, uh, and then you have an option to adding on optional school visits or presentations during the fair as well. So just work with us. Uh, the, right now we're trying to close almost everything by the end of this month, February. So we have um, an early bird discount of the 1,000 rates until February 24th, and then it goes up to 1,200 per, per city. So keep that in mind as you're reviewing the process and making decisions. Um, again, I'll, I'll just make this very short, but you know, if you do choose to work with us on the travel accommodation package, it's basically you know, a concierge service where from the first day you arrive to the last day you leave, we take care of everything for you. We pick you up at the airport, we take care of your registration, you check in, your hotel accommodations are set for us, and we also book your flights to go to the next city each time. The only thing I'll be responsible for will be your visa, your international flights, and any shipping costs that you might incur for your materials from your school. 
but the rest will be uh, counted by, by, our, by our study match or presented there. So anybody is coming to INDA for the first time, I highly recommend that. I've been to INDA many times, and my first time was a little bit uh, scary because it's just a, uh, it's a culturally different you know, environment. And if you're not used to going to INDA before, this would be highly recommendable so you don't have to worry about logistics and coordination along with the fair. So again, you know, what's going to be in it for you and what's really going to be your benefits to wrap it up? Um, the ROI for you, of course, has to be how many students can you bring back for the fall, for the spring 2018, or for the fall 2017. Definitely, it's our goal to do the same. You know, we wouldn't do this, you know, if we didn't want to, to help you. So the goal for us is to help to market your school before the fair. Then the fair, you are engaging with the students. We'll give you access to all the leads as well. But it's going to be our job as a partner as well to work the leads afterwards to ensure that we are giving you an application pipeline and that we're working with the students to pass the visa interviews and to go to your schools. If in anything happens that maybe you have very strict budgets, maybe you haven't been able to travel to India before and it's not in your plans for the, for the spring, um, we are also having a couple of spots in each fair where you're going to be able to do a live webinar presentation from your school in your home country, but reaching out a large audience who will be at the fair that day. So these are the pricing. If you're doing just one CD, it's six hundred dollars. Two CDs is one thousand, and three is fifteen hundred. So again, this is another option. Another one I would highly recommend first and foremost because nothing can really be better than a personal interaction with the students and the parents. But we are flexible and we understand, so this is something to consider as well. All right, I'm going, to, I'm going to close it up here, leave it up for questions, and Abhishek to finish up. Just be aware that I'm going to be in D.C. Uh, next week for the AIEA uh, a conference. So if you're going to be there, let me know. Um, uh, you'll have my email in the uh, follow-up thank you email from that recording, and you can reach out to me and schedule some time to have a face-to-face -face with me. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you very much, Michael. And uh, I would appreciate all attendees, if you have any questions regarding uh, the fairs, regarding the recruitment, you can ask. So you can see the chat box window in right hand side, so feel free to write it down there. Abby, did you find some questions? I've been seeing this uh, question, how it is different than other fairs? That's the first question. How well, I, 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 mean, I think we can all have. Why don't you start, Abby, and I'll add my, my insight to that too. Okay. So, I think the best thing which we are going to do is the night summit, which is not only limited with this uh, Indian student recruitment, which is an important part, but at the uh, same time, at every night, you would be meeting with up to 15 to 20 university in the school decision makers so again this won't be the people who are actually going to come down who are the decision maker and I've been negotiating and talking to the universities about it as I can see University of North Alabama is here so that course mapping thing which Indian University and schools are pretty much ready with so that's one piece of information that we gonna have in our night summit to get a chance to network with the Indian schools and colleges Second thing I like about is our presentation says that you can expect up to 700 students. But again, talking to 700 students in a day would be very hectic. But at the same time, we are hiring another smaller banquet to do a session there, a live session with a pre-qualified students. So out of 700, 50 to 80 people would be in the fair who would be listening only to your product and this would be for all applicable university who are participating and at the same time this will be a live session just like now which would be listening by all Indian students who would we would be calling so this two things I feel like is very different than anybody else good points Abhi. I think very much so in terms of the uh... Uh, attendance. Um, to, to, to my perspective, you know, having worked in education before in recruitment, um, what I was looking for always was truly like standing out and having qualified students there. Um, I think that this fair, number one, is one of the only fairs that is hosted by an agency, not by a for-profit just education fair. 
So that means that you have the benefit of having to be there, partner with us, develop a relationship with us too, but also we have an incentive for following up on the leads afterward and to work the applications. So it's, it's a dual benefit, right? Otherwise you'd be attending a BMI fair, for example, and um, you would meet students, and then you'd have to do all the work afterward, right? which is very overwhelming, as you might imagine that too. Um, and in India, you really need to work with local agencies because it's a long process for enrollment and there's just so many steps to go through with the culture. So that's number one. Number two, I think it's important that we are capping, we have a limit on how many schools can participate. And looking at the registration so far, we're trying to also balance, you know, how many schools from different programs are going to be there, from how many countries. So we have Europe, we have Canada, we have the US, we're looking into also Colombia, uh, South Africa, Indian University. So again, it, it, it makes everyone stand out more whenever you have a small number of schools that have a unique differentiator pres um, value, value proposition. Um, and then I think that the, uh, the, the nice thing is the, the school presentations. You know, when we bring you to the school, it's another level of, I think, engagement with students and with the schools that otherwise uh, you wouldn't be having uh, with, with other fairs. Um, so that, that's my perspective on it. I think, and also I think the timing is very important, right? So April is key for India. And, and if you were to go there in May and June, it'd be too late. If you were to go now in February, you know, that would be also a good time. But um, some people wouldn't know if they actually passed their exam at that time. So that's, that would be a little bit um, pointless. But good question for whoever asked it. <laughs> Thank you. Abhishek, anything else you think? Uh, yeah, that's fine. So, Abby, do you have any other question? Yes, Vivian Lu asked this question. We are community college. I work with two Indian stu agents. However, none of them has recruited students for us. The reason is the U.S. Embassy will not approve Indian students visa to study at community, community college. In fact, the U.S. Embassy did return down a lot of applicant visa for coming community college. What is your advice? So, generally, the community college and uh, you know the students are getting denial and Vivian has a question that what do you advise how to go about it? One thing I can say and I, I would like to also ask Abhishek to give some input because he works more and more with, uh, with the students directly. Um, what, but what, what I've heard and what I know is happening now is that whenever there is an agreement um, with a state school, so, so most community colleges, you know, are able to have matriculations, which means that they they'll start one or two year with them, and then they have an easy pathway into finishing up a bachelor's degree with the state schools in the area. Whenever you can show that the student is having an objective that is four year, not just two year, and already has thought about that next step, I think that's really helpful in the visa interview. Number one, um, number two, uh, it's 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 maybe good to also look at working directly with the high schools in India um, who can enter into a, some sort of partnership agreement with your community college. Because in that case then, whenever the students go to the visa interview, they are presenting their case, but they are also having an official letter from the school saying that there is a formal agreement with that school and that they are going there because they have been recommended by the school to go there. So that's that's been something that is being a good strategy and in fact that's the reason why we have those school days where you can go into partnership development uh, because it really makes a difference whenever there is sort of an arrangement between two universities and it's it's official. Okay, I've got, I've got another question for, from Paul. If budget is an issue for this year, what are the options available? Well, I think it's, uh, there's always options. I think that um, de determining your budget, I think, is very important. You, you have an option to do a, the live webinar, which we mentioned before, at a lower cost. Um, oftentimes, you'll be able to convince a dean or a brass provost to spend $1,000 more out of the budget if, if they really can see the value in that. And if, if you had to miss the opportunity and have to wait for the fall spring, I mean, for the fall fair, you'd be missing out on the fall 2017 intake numbers, right? So. I think everybody has to, to be mindful of timing is very key. Um, if you wait and you miss opportunities, you have to then postpone your recruitment for another year, basically. So my goal to you would be 
look at all options on the table. We can sometimes work with you also if you want to go to maybe one or two cities as opposed to the whole packet, so it's a little bit cheaper. Um, but we also have been very mindful in keeping the cost competitive um, for you to think that this is a good investment and it's worth it. Okay. Shall I take another question from Kirsten? Uh, what are the, uh, sorry, how concerned are the Indian students about studying in U.S. with the current political climate? Should we be prepared to address it with the students and parents at the fairs? Absolutely. We, we, that's great that you asked this question. I, I knew it was going to come up. <laughs> um, it, it definitely is something that we are living. I mean, I live in the U.S., so I know exactly what you're coming from with that. And, and I've been speaking to Abhishek, who is in the, who tells me about the the questions that are arising from the students. And number one, yes, there, there is uh, some fear and some concern about U.S. U.S. Um, university education. So what I think is important here to do is not to, to withdraw, but instead to, to go forward and, and more transparent in your communication to the students. Having a chance to, to be in the fair is, I think, what's going to help to bring confidence and, and, and into the parents' mind and to the students' mind that the universities have a strong commitment for diversity. Um, I'm not sure if you're part, you're part of this, this movement that is happening within the higher education system where all the presidents are writing letters saying and affirming the key for diversity, international inclusion and such. So I think it's they have to hear this from you guys. Uh, the students will hear it from us but it's much more effective if you can have a voice in saying our school is committed, we have a great environment to welcome you, we've got all these programs to, to, to get you, you know, settled in, um, teachers are international themselves, it's very, you know, and so the message really has to come from you to, to, to release the fears. Okay, thanks. If I add this point that um, while I was, uh, you know, rec you know, counseling students here in the office, we got to learn about that many of the students were also trying to change their plans of going to U.S. and thinking about giving us, them the options about Australia. And the kind of feedback which I got was not that the students are willing to do it because of all the political new changes coming in, but their parents were more concerned about not sending them there. So at the fair, it would be important, and we we are also would be trying to, you know, bring the parents on board so that we can make sure that we also address them that with the kind of issue which is going on and how, what would be the implications in future. Okay. So what to expect from the school uh, visit? It's been asked by uh, Chrissy. What, what to expect from the school visit? So the first thing is to, to, you would have to let us know what schools that you are interested in meeting with, right? So we'll give you options. You want to meet a private school, a public school, do you want to meet you know, a high school, or do you want to meet a college? And then give us specific programs that are of interest to you. Once we know that, We'll work with our network of, of partners to set up the meetings that morning. You're going to go in that school. Oftentimes, the Indian universities will give you some sort of small welcoming ceremony uh, with flowers, with tea. It's just part of the process of meeting the officials of the university. Once that's done, uh, you'll have a chance to speak in front of a big classroom. So oftentimes, what is going to happen is the dean will communicate to all the students that we have an international guest and they will rally all the kids together and you'll have a chance to talk about your program. Uh, they'll probably give you an hour, I guess it all depends you know, on your schedule that day depending on what your next visits, but uh, we'll work that out for you. But the key is going to be that you're going to be able to speak to the students, speak to the deans, the teachers, leave some materials there too for follow-ups um, and really sort of get conversation going about um, studying at your university. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a question from Kay. Uh, I know I met her there in Miami. My four-year private university is also experiencing many visa denials in India. Do you have any recommendations for us? Well, I think it's uh, every school is experiencing different things, right? So I, I, I don't know if I could speak to on, on behalf of just uh, your school, um, but um, 
what, what I know is that the success rate of visa can, can be dependent on a couple of factors. Um, number one, we know it's the student preparation. Um, that's not always why, but that's key and that's why I think it's important for us to work with you as a school to teach the students as much as possible about why they chose that school. Second, um, it's almost more favorable when a student has done all the testing and all the uh, English examinations, even if the school doesn't require it sometimes. That always shows a higher dedication to go into uh, study abroad. And I think third, what's, what's happening is more schools now also looking to, in addition to recruitment, having again those international partnerships with colleges in which the students come from. And so that there is um, two sides of the equation. The students wants to go there, and then there's also sort of this agreement between two universities um, that shows that you know this is something that has been vetted out. It's part of the process of the education system in India to send people abroad to further their education. And it releases the fear that you know, they may want to go there just for staying in the US and never come back. Um, so I think that's key, right? A lot of factors are in play. Um, and um, we're doing our best. You know, if, if anybody here on the chat system has, has concerns or questions or maybe suggestions, you know, we welcome for that too. Um, and maybe Abhishek can also talk about this as well. Yeah, I think the uh, which which we have seen that the most of the students, the preparation is the key. Which I think uh, we we should provide them the complete visa training before they attend the uh, visa interview. And the second point, Michael, uh, you said correctly, is that they should know about the which universities they are going, because we have found sometimes with the students when they attend the visa. They are not sure about it, which professors are going to teach them, what kind of climate, where they are going to stay, how much they are going to pay and all. So those kind of small, small things are there. Sometimes the students does not take seriously and uh, if they get a chance to speak with the university's delegates before they apply for the visa, it can help them. So we suggest the universities, our partner universities to have a Skype call with them to have a telephonic conversation so they knew uh, the university know better than what kind of students they are uh, coming down to their campus and the students also understand what kind of informations uh, the delegates they can share with them. And okay, if you experience this visa denial in the year 2016 then my um, true feedback to you would be that it has been with everybody so even as an agency we struggle even as a school who visited us and we have been talking to them so we know that the 16 was not a good year so if you are experiencing the 2017 this type of issues and you did this for uh, last year then it was with most of US schools however the preparations which Abhishek was talking about that uh, I would we would propose you something else for this where we really do help students by telling them to be honest and serious student be honest with the um, you know visa officers in order to present their documents and whatever they are saying they should be very much relevant with what they have mentioned in their DS-160 so our one team of visa official um, you know who work with helping giving them the right advice and right guidance before they go for the interview so if you need this type of help or any other university look forward for it I could connect you to the person who does it and uh, he could actually give you the right guidance and then how they, your students can succeed in the visa interview yeah and, and maybe okay. maybe to you know the, the H1B um, policy from the new administration you know is, is, is sort of right now um, Pending, I guess you can say there's some questions about reducing, expanding it. We're not really sure where it's going to go, but that could also be a, in our favor this year. We hope so, in the sense that um, many Indian students, you know, are hoping to work in, in the U.S. at the end, and so that's the fear of the immigration officials. But uh, maybe with the new regulations, that will restrict uh, more people to do that. That will actually show that the people who are going really want to go to study first and foremost. So I think it's a little bit unknown, but that's sort of my 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 inside to, to this right now okay 
so we are heading towards the end now i've got uh, remaining questions so i want uh, to take one on one from lisa craft what opportunities are there for english language programs in india no pathways english language training only so if i understand just having students go abroad just to study one year probably maybe six months to a year of english right um, what, what do you yes, think of Ishaq? I don't work a lot with those sort of inquiries. Yeah, so it, this is a really, really good question, and I think uh, she she is from the Pace University, and uh, the Pace University is located in the New York, and this is again uh, one of the good destination where the Indian students want to go. Now, uh, most of the students uh, they don't have IELTS and TOEFL, or if they have, they have the less score. They apply for uh, ESL programs. So we we get so many students, especially from the Gujarat and all, because New Jersey in the New York area where you can see mostly the Gujarati Indians are available. So um, what I could I could say is that that there are the opportunities where the students can go for the ESL programs, and we are sending so many ESL students to TLC, to Bridge, and to another uh, ESL provider. Uh, the only thing which we have seen is again the visa issue because if the students are only going for the ESL there's highly chances for the visa officer to reject uh, them because they don't feel that they are serious because might be they can disappear after three months or six months. Mm -hmm. So uh, Lisa what we can do that if we are getting some kind of condition letter uh, from your school itself let's say if they are coming for the undergraduate program or the graduate program so if we are getting any kind of conditional letter which is stating that after the ESL they will study there that would be uh, very good options for the students and for the visa officer also that they are coming for the long time the second thing which we have started recently with the ESL schools and uh, we are talking to one and two ESL school also to come down to our fair is that that uh, a uh, couple of the schools uh, uh, which Indian schools which they are looking that their students should speak good English uh, while they are studying here so they they were going for the some kind of summer programs in abroad so what we are suggesting the students here that if you are going for the summer kind of programs go with our ESL provider so that if they are coming if they have a two months break uh, in summer they can come down to your uh, uh, institute and they can study English there and then again they come back in India and they study for uh, their remaining uh, subjects which which again help visa officer to understand that the students are coming for only going only for the two months or three months and again he will come back so the visa will be very high and when the students see the you know when the students see the campus they meet with the professors in the end they choose same university only that is happened if you see how the Barclay has done in India is that they came down in India in 1885 or in 90s where they only promoted the summer programs after five to ten years most of the Indian students they knew Barclay because of the summer program but again they turn out for the undergraduate because they went for the summer program because it's it's it's, it's like a trailer of the movie when the people they see the trailer yeah it's very good they again they as a human beings they prefer the same uh, university only so it's a good chance again uh, to get the students back for your graduate and undergraduate program yeah I like it's a really good point yeah thank you I think we have time for one or two more questions then we probably have to close it and we can okay. definitely talk to you sure, sure. If I respond to that in a minute while I just, uh, you know, tell. Lisa, one thing which I really feel like we've been uh, uh, in touch with uh, Boston uh, University and they have a, that ELP uh, program. What you could do is like in Indian market, people are pretty much, um, you know, speak English and it's unlike in China or Japan or Korea. But here you could make a curriculum which is more into writing style, just like APA writing style. So if you do that, then my recommendation is like you could get students who could really speak good English, but they could come down to do the business English learning or writing skills. So that could help you to get the visa at the end of the day because visa officers know that 
that it's better if you can speak good English why you want to spend another five six thousand dollars to go to ESL it's better for you to do the IELTS here and then go but if they talk about the business English and writing style then probably they would understand that so okay let me just take the another question from do you work with US public high school with an F1 visa that's a question from Vicky Baron Abhishek, uh, any, any insight on that one? I'll... Yeah, that is again a really good question uh, because we are closely working with a couple of the high schools in the United States and frankly speaking, we started uh, this relationship uh, in the last six months only because our main target, uh, we were, as India is a graduate market always, so most of the graduate market, graduate students, they go abroad for the higher studies but which we have seen the increment in the undergraduate market where most of the Indian students now they are planning to go for the undergraduate and the same kind of increment now we are seeing uh, to the high schools also especially we are getting the inquiries where the students uh, they want to go after their 10th so mainly they are going for the 11th and 12th to the uh, abroad for the high schools which again uh, their plan is to get the good universities, public public universities for the undergraduate. So it's it's again a good market, but yeah, it's it, it it will take some times to get good number of the students from India. But again, we would suggest our couple of high schools is that that yeah, you have to come and you have to meet with the parents because the parents is a key who take this kind of decision for the Indian students. That's right. And actually, a, a school reached out to us yesterday, uh, um, a secondary school from California as well. So it's for the same purpose. I think that uh, it's a trend that we're seeing, um, realizing that um, students from abroad, I think the, the need really, I think, started in, in China, actually. Um, the Chinese market was so aggressive in wanting to study abroad, but having some issues with the English and uh, passing the requirements to go into college that uh, a flexible solution was found to let people go into maybe a junior or senior high school year in the U.S., which only requires a lower TOEFL score and barely just transcripts right from a, from a, from a high school. And then from there, they are embedded into the U.S. system in which they can do the ACT, SAT, improve their English, and uh, at that point even pass better exams for TOEFL which really helps them to get into admissions for college students. So the model I think is very very smart and I think that now we're seeing that people are going into the Indian market and wanting to test it out and like Abhishek was saying before the way you can do that is by by finding some effective private Indian high school partners and so for those who want to do that keep in mind again that the fair has three days focus on just building this partnership. So that would be, I think, your focus if you were to do that during that time with us. Okay, I've got the last question with me, and I, I really uh, smiling while I'm, uh, uh, you know, going to read this. When is your next webinar? How do you feel about live webinars? Do you enjoy doing them? It was very informative. Thank you. It's a, it, that's that's a question as well as the feedback from Stephanie and Rick. <laughs> Where are they from? What school? Uh, let me see if I can just find that. But uh, that's from Stephanie and Riggs, and I can see the half name only. I All I can see to... literally is that um, Abhishek, Abhi, and I, you know, I think make a great team. We 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 have a good balance, and uh, webinar is actually one thing that uh, we have done for years, and that actually makes study metro stand out from other from other agencies. So. Um, as, as you become a partner, actually, of, of Study Metro, and we represent you, uh, we, we actually set up webinars to just teach who you are to interact with our staff on a regular basis. So I guess we've done this for many, many times. Now, with this regard, of course, this is our life, last one for the fair, because, again, like I was saying, we have to plan and confirm all the participants by the end of this month, so we have a month to do all the logistics and coordination before you arrive in India. So that's your chance, and if you want to have a live webinar with us directly, <laughs> let us know too. Okay, that's lead to the end of the webinar today. Uh, Vicky Baron, I can, uh, okay, let me just take the question again. I'm sorry, but because Vicky has another question, I can make the fair in India. However, if we do a Skype with students or parents, that would be great. So Vicky, we'll take care of that. Let's let's communicate via Skype. So. Okay, A anything which we have now? 
Michael, any anything for the attendees? No, I think that's that's really all. I would just encourage you to follow up with us directly now about further questions. Um, tell us about your interest, your specific city request, your needs, your budgets, and then we'll respond to you really quickly and respond to those needs. And uh, and again, I'm going to be in DC next week for the AIEA conference. So uh, anyone that wants to meet me in person can do so. Um, my email right now is listed. Look forward to it. Thanks very much, everybody. Also participating in NAFSA and our booth number would be 847. So if you really are looking forward, if not in AIEA in Washington, D.C., then it would be in L.A. So you could meet with us. Uh, Abhishek, do you have anything for... Yeah, so the last thing is which is that that if the if if you cannot come down to the India, I think the live webinar would be uh, another way to connect with all the Indian students. Okay, sounds good. So we are setting you free four minutes before. The only goal is of, of this webinar has been that if you are being going to be a part of this webinar, uh, this education fair, then certainly you would get a great branding, the brand awareness in the or, or the Indian students, as well as we're gonna make sure that you really get to you know some good number of students for your fall intake and at the same time a great networking with the Indian schools and the colleges and if this is happening then we would still get in touch with you for the next fair which we would do pretty soon and uh, we really want if you have any question feel free to write us and we would take take ahead from there if you are unable to make it for this time then webinar where you could sit in your office and you could even get to learn with the live students and the good thing is that we would be sharing the data with of all the live students which would be here in our fair and at the same time even if you are attending a school visit we are going to share the data of those students with you as well so you could do the follow-up and we could do the follow-up so thank you so much all of uh, all of you for your time we really appreciate that and we will get in touch with you soon thank you thank very you much everybody. Thanks. Have a nice day. Have a great one, all of you. Thank you so much.